Hey guys, this is Adam, and today I'm gonna show you how can you perform conditional deployment of your Azure infrastructure using ARM templates. Stay tuned! The principles of how conditional deployment works are fairly simple. First of all, it's always invoked using condition property, and this property is only applicable for resources blocks. And whenever you meet criteria defined in a condition property, this resource will be deployed, otherwise this will be skipped. Typical scenarios that you would want to use conditional deployment in are, for instance, deployment of firewall rules on your servers, switching between existing and creating new resources, or in general, better template parameterization. But the scenarios, there's quite few of them, so we don't need to list them all. The principles of how this works are fairly simple. There's a condition property that is applied on a resource, and this property will accept an expression. Whenever this expression will return a true value, that means the resource will be deployed. Otherwise, this resource will be skipped. If you need to perform conditional checks for parameters, variables, or properties, simply use if function, because condition is reserved only to resources. Let's take an example. If you have a parameter called deploy storage that allows you only to pass two values, yes or no, then you can create a condition which will check an expression whenever your parameter deploy storage equals to yes, in which case the storage account would be deployed. If you would select no, then it would be skipped. And that's pretty much it when it comes to basic of how this works. So what are the key watchouts that you should remember when using the conditional deployment? First and foremost, the entire template is still evaluated and this has several implications. Like for instance, it doesn't matter whenever this resource will be deployed or it will be skipped, Resource Manager will still validate all the properties for the resource, like name, SKUs. So if you're gonna do a conditional deployment based on an empty name, then the deployment will still fail because you cannot pass an empty name to any resource in Azure. Additionally, if you're using reference functions or list functions or any function that references a conditionally deployed resource, those functions will still be evaluated. Therefore, they will fail if you're gonna try to reference non-existing resource and you should use if function if you want to avoid that. And if you're building dependent resources in your templates, this still works with conditional deployments. Simply refer to the resource and resource manager will skip the resource if it's not deployed and we will automatically remove all the dependencies from your ARM template. And let's talk about one of the most common questions asked for conditional deployment. And that is, can I deploy a resource? If a resource already exists with an Azure, can you do a conditional check whenever any resource in Azure already exists? And the answer is, you no, know, you can't. This is not the tool for that. If you need that kind of stuff, use CLI or PowerShell and then pass the parameter dynamically to your ARM template. And the demos for today are quite simple. We're gonna deploy storage accounts conditionally. I'm gonna show you the most common issues when deploying conditionally and how to fix them. Next, we're gonna deploy dependent resources using references. We're gonna clean a little bit our templates using variables. And lastly, I will show you one of the demos when you're building on and off switch, like in the storage account example, but in this case, it's gonna be SQL Server. So let's go to the portal and actually to the Visual Studio. As always, let's start with a simple ARM JSON file in which we're gonna deploy a storage account and have a parameterized storage account name. So let's use this example to use a conditional deployment whenever this name will be empty, then we don't want to deploy a storage account. Otherwise, we want to deploy and use that name as a name of the storage account. And to do that, we need to apply a condition. I like to put conditions as a first block so I can easily see that this resource is being deployed conditionally. So there's a condition and you create evaluation block. And this is an expression. In this case, I want to see if this storage account is not empty. So I'm gonna use not function from in which I'm gonna check it if this string is empty and pass my parameter storage account name. In this case, I'm checking whenever a parameter was passed. If it won't be passed, then this resource will not be deployed. First of all, remember one important thing. You cannot pass a parameter that is empty. So we need to set a default value. So default value for this storage account name is empty. So if someone doesn't pass anything, it will use empty value. Therefore, this condition check will fail. So let's test this in a portal. I know this will fail, but I want to show you why. 
So let's create a template, build your own template, paste it in. Let's create new ARM01 resource group. Let's leave this blank because we want to skip and hit purchase. And the validation failed because it says that the template resource at line null because it doesn't know where, but it knows that name property can it be null or empty. And why is that? Because this not only will be placed here and to check that for the nulls, but it will also be placed here. So we're going to have an empty name for the resource. And as I said, all the properties are still validated. It doesn't matter if this condition will fail. So what happens is that it tries to put an empty name here and the deployment fails. There are a couple ways to fix that, but in this case, I'm just going to create a variable, which will be also called storage account name, in which I'm going to do a simple if statement. So if, and I'm going to do the same check as here. So if this condition is true, then I want to use the name of the parameter. So I want to use my storage account name if it's not empty. Otherwise, I'm just going to pass the name storage. In which case, if someone passed an empty name, here it will fill storage. And to do that, I simply need to change from parameters to variables. So let's test this again. Let's close this. Let's replace the template, paste it in, hit save, hit agree, and hit purchase again. Of course, this storage will not deploy at all because we didn't pass any name but it did need that temporary name in order to perform the validation itself. The deployment finished, so you can go to the template and review in the deployment details that actually nothing was deployed because we didn't pass the name. And if we would, the deployment would succeed. So let's use this example to expand on this. I'm gonna paste two more resources. One will be a web server where we're gonna deploy our web application called app service plan with some unique string. And then I'm going to deploy a website on that app service plan. And once the deployment of this site is done, I want to list the keys for this storage account here. So two things that we need to fix here. First of all, we need to fix dependency because if we're going to try to list the keys for the storage account, it will fail. So we need to depend on that. And dependencies for Conditional resources is fairly easy. It's pretty much the same like normally. So just create the resource ID, pass the resource provider name, in which case this is the storage account, storage account name, and then provide the name of the service, which is in our case variables storage account name. As you see, this is pretty much the same whenever this is deployed conditionally or not. And resource manager will remove this line if this will evaluate to false. So this resource will not be deployed, therefore it won't be dependent on. Next we need to fix here, because if this storage account will not deploy and we're going to try to list the keys for this storage account, it will of course fail again. So what we need to do here is create an if, and in this if function we need to provide the same parameter, so this not empty parameters name. So let's use that here, paste it here, and as you see it's readable. If our parameter is not empty, so someone passed the name of the storage account, then please, please list keys for the storage account. And at the very end, if someone didn't pass the name for the storage account, just leave this as empty string and complete the if statement. In which case it will return the keys if the storage account exists and it will return empty string if it doesn't. So let's grab this entire template and go back to the portal and create new template deployment using our new template. And as you see in the template, three things will be deployed, storage account, service plan, and the web app. Let's save it. Let's create ARM02 deployment, and let's provide the name. So in this case, we can either provide the name for the storage account like amdemo1234a and hit save, this should deploy with the storage account and list the keys. And at the same time, we can perform second deployment. Where I'm just going to pass the exactly same template. But in this case, I'm going to deploy to ARM03 and leave this empty. So let's hit purchase. And now let's wait for both deployments. 
and both deployments are done, so we can review both of them. As you see, we've got deployment to 0 02 and 0 03, so let's review the previous one to 0 02. Let's go to the deployment itself, and you can review in the deployment section the template deployment. And what are the deployed resources? As you see, we deployed Microsoft Storage account, then we deployed a web service and a website. And if you go to our resource group, you're gonna find all three resources here. After a while, they appeared. And if you go to App Service, to Configuration, you're gonna find our storage account key with the key value for the storage. And if you go to the second deployment for the ARM03 resource group, in the template deployment, you're gonna find that the storage was not deployed, only the website and web server was deployed. And if you go to the resource group, let's go to the resource group, you're gonna find yourself a app service, app service plan. And if you go to get the configuration that you deployed, you're still gonna find the storage access key because you still deploy that setting, but the value is empty because you created that conditional deployment there. And it, since the name of the storage account was empty, you returned an empty value here. One of the things that I like to do right now when I'm doing a lot of conditional deployment is to create variables to clean the template a bit. So just grab this evaluation and what I usually do is deploy storage just like a flag. So in which case I'm passing this evaluation statement and then I can use it anywhere in the template instead of retyping it over and over. And you see there's a lot of parentheses. So if you're just gonna be piling up on those, you can very easily make mistake. Now you can actually change this to be much more readable by just using variables and passing deploy storage flag. So just use this if and pass the statement everywhere. You can use it here in the condition, then you can use this in dependencies, you can use this in this function here. And in my opinion, this is much more readable. If variables deploy storages present, then list the keys for the storage account. And I consider this very good practice. And for the last demo, I want to show you on and off switches, which is one of the good examples of using conditional deployment. And I'm gonna paste a very simple template which deploys SQL Server, this is an Azure SQL, and additionally it deploys a firewall rule which allows all the IPs coming from Azure to go through that rule and connect to this SQL Server. So one of the good examples of using on and off switch is by creating another variable which calls allo Azure IPs, which is of type string, and for allowed values, I'm gonna use yes and no. So it's just gonna be a very simple RI with yes and no value. So if user passes a yes, we will allow all Azure IPs. That means this entire nested resource, this is a child resource of Microsoft SQL Server called Firewall Rules, should not be deployed if we select no. So we're just creating a condition here, which will evaluate. And what will it evaluate? Let's call equals function and check whenever our parameters called Azure IPs equals yes. And that's pretty much it. So we can actually grab this template and go to the portal to test it. So let's perform new template deployment, paste the template, and let's create ARM04 and create admin username. and select. Do we all owe Azure IPs? Select yes, hit purchase, and run the template. And let's see the results. Once the deployment is done, go to the resource group, and find your SQL server there. Once it appears, go into it, and go to the firewall section, because this is what we're changing right now, firewalls and virtual networks, and allow Azure services to access the server is select to yes. By default, it would be set to no. So our deployment succeeded as expected. And there are many more scenarios that you can use with conditional deployment. There are many tricks that you can do to get even more advanced, like conditional deployment an array of properties, concatenating, etc., etc. But in principle, this is how you conditionally deploy resources in Azure.
As you see, using conditions in ARM templates is quite easy and it gives you a lot of flexibility and allows you to build those generic templates that you want for your organization. But for today, that's it. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe and definitely see you next time.